welcome back to Gaming the System, the podcast where intersectional feminists take a look at gaming through a feminist lens. And you've rejoined me and Jem for part two of our look at The Sims. We've already talked about kind of our history with The Sims and like how we feel about the game in general. And uh, I think this episode we're going to talk about the latest Sims, The Sims 4, and the changes that have taken place recently um within it like the latest expansion packs that sort of thing and i guess where we see this sims heading in the future as well um now i'm gonna say probably if you've listened to the last episode you know i don't have much experience with the sims 4 so i'm gonna be reliant on you gem to kind of fill me in on how much the sims has changed since i probably last played it which was quite a long time ago now um what leaps and bounds has The Sims made in terms of the way it represents society, and by which I mean all sections of society? Um, what is it like in terms of the audience that plays it? We did mention at the end of the last episode that probably a large proportion of people that play The Sims are young women. So how does it feel for them playing a game, um, uh, you know, has there been any strides in terms of representation there and and uh, and that sort of thing? Um, and I guess where what improvements can be made, what steps can be taken to to get us to a place where Sims is perhaps more inclusive than it is currently? Is there anything missing? So with those questions in mind, Jen, how are you feeling about the Sims Four at the moment? At the moment, I. I'm really into it. Um, yeah. I, I, I think Sims 4 came out in like 2017, so it's been out for quite a oh, long we'll check time. I'll check that for you now. And I think it has, it? Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like um, GTA 5 in that way. Is it? Yeah. So um, let's see. Release date. I'm just checking for accuracy. 2014, 2nd of September. 2014. So almost 10 years. Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, so I have had it for a while. Um, and I played it on, I've played it on the PC mostly. I've normally yeah. played it, but I also had it on the Xbox, mm -hmm. on the Xbox. And then I think I also got it on the PlayStation, played it on yeah. the PlayStation. Um, I find it really hard to play on the consoles because I can't. Yeah, I don't. I certainly found that for control. the later ones. Yeah, I think yeah. PC is probably the easier way to play it with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and then I, and then I was gifted a um, a new laptop mm. for Christmas, and Very nice. um, and it's. It's get it's not a gaming laptop, but it's got enough juice in it to game with. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, basically, what I've been using, and because of that, it meant that I I could sit in front of the telly and play games. So suddenly, there was another opportunity for to play games that didn't require one hundred percent of my attention, um, like you know things like The Last of Us or mm -hmm. um, Dragon Age or horizon and all of those games that we we talk a lot about on on here yeah so oh, but actually what really made the difference was that a friend of mine sent me a link to a video of a a, a guy doing a speed run through of sims to get a mm. million simoleons within oh, wow. one week or something oh, wow. <laughs> ridiculous and so and he just did this and I, and I watched this and I was just kind of like oh, and it just really tingled all my sort of like yeah um, sim, sim senses so I thought I'll check it out um so yeah so I've been so I picked it back up again and I was really impressed by the changes that have been mm. made since I last played it properly which was probably about three or four years ago yeah um especially like in character creation because mm. they've now got sort of unlimited um skin colors um really inclusive and wide range of hair colors they've got all sorts of additional things like uh have a hearing aid you can have mm. two hearing aids you can have yeah. um uh you can have um 
skin discoloration, changes in um, um, skin color, freckles and um, birthmarks. And there's just mm -hmm. a huge amount of things that you can do now that you weren't able to do before that you can just really make people. And, and even, you know, even in like body shape and stuff. Mm really sort of change everything and and they have a lot of preset stuff but then within that you can specifically edit individual aspects so you so you yeah. you know change the shape of the nose you know they have like 12 different preset nose shapes but then they have um like the ability to go in and actually mm like every little bit of the nose which is fantastic and also horrendous was really loves to yeah get into that and it literally took me about more than an hour to create wow. like, yeah you know uh, yeah. so i think i think from those perspectives they they've made the game much more inclusive there's stuff like when you're talking to when you're socializing with sims you can ask them about their um sort of hookup preference oh yes people who are you know heterosexual i've met people who are people who are um, homosexual you know i've met people who are are all, all a variety within the That's game good. yeah um and again you know it's, there's no big fanfare made about it, it just mm. no yeah is and i think that's catering to their broad audience and, and yeah, yeah storytelling i think it was still you could still um create families with whoever whichever sims you wanted i think in the originals and there yeah. wasn't a big deal made about it i think you could even make a family with death couldn't you yeah I, remember, I seem to remember and you could make like ghost children or something yeah i'm not quite sure how it works but uh that was always that's always been there but i think now like you say with with it kind of being within conversation options it's a little bit more sort of present as it were i guess mm. making it more mm. visible maybe um than it used to be um which i think is really nice to hear as well mm. um and especially in terms of like body shapes and um ethnicity is as well is really cool to hear about yeah. um mm. do you think it could go further though in the character creator is there anything missing from that that's not there now yeah i mean i think there's um a lot of um disabilities mm. missing from from that i think you know there's no i not that i've i've not found any wheelchair users mm. for example and i think yeah. that would be a, a really cool thing to put yeah. in actually and then you could you could have a whole heap of building definitely things like around that making, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And, really and cool. I think that would be great because I think that would make you know I think there's one thing that I've learned as as um an able-bodied gamer and mm. and you know person in the world properly appreciate the challenges that are faced with pe for, for people with disabilities is um it you need to see them <laughs> you, know, you need to yeah. engage with people exactly. who experience that and you know i think it's really really good if games can do this because even if they say oh well you know it's it's just a only if you going to want to be in a wheelchair it doesn't matter like just seeing a, a, a sim in the wheelchair in your sim neighborhood would be fantastic mm. I think, yeah. you know because it just makes those things you know and it opens up the opportunity for conversations exactly. between people about that and you know with kit between parents and kids and i just think you know visibility is yeah. really important so exactly. i think there is definitely more that they could do to sort of just properly encompass the whole sort of gamut of human mm. yeah it's experience. definitely about building awareness i think and that's definitely one of the ways that the sims can do that um especially it, it starts these conversations and i think what we love about this podcast is that we get to talk about all these different things even if we're not 
like having the same lived experience as the things we're talking about we're still talking about it which is uh, what's most important I think yeah absolutely yeah. um I want to talk about oh, I had a look before we started these episodes about the latest expansion pack um I think it's called growing together and it's yeah. all about relationships and apparently now you there's a stage between baby and toddler that's new called infant and mm. Ellie, Ellie informs me that you can now when you're an infant sleep with pets like sleep on top of dogs or cats and things and it's apparently very cute uh which is an interesting addition um other things that happen I think is more to do with like familial relationships and dynamics mm. within families which is an interesting avenue to explore mm. certainly mm. I think looking at the sims in general I always feel like apart from being great to play and very popular with a lot of different people um it's also very popular it's a very popular game to stream and I think it's very popular in terms of like people just watching it rather than playing mm. it as well mm. and having perhaps those um added dynamics within the relationships of your sims that you've made would definitely be a boon for for any streamer to create like any dramatic plot lines or you know a serious family falling out has happened in today's episode or or like there's been a long lost brother returned or something yeah. you know things all sorts of things like that but uh I guess it's just trying to reflect the natural dramas of people's lives, not to put it in, like to, to make it into more than it is. But uh, I think one of the ways that Sims appeals to a lot of people is that it can reflect your own life and what's going on in your own life a little bit. And mm. I guess that's one of the ways they're trying to bring people in is to, is to, um, is to enable players to to have those kinds of things going on in there yeah in world. yeah my sim was out for a jog the other morning because yeah. i was really annoyed because my sim i hadn't made my sim super skinny i'd made her average size yeah and then because she was basically just sitting around at home and eating crisps <laughs> out the cupboard and then, because i could because i she um she uh. got she gained loads of weight she oh, got no. really large so, oh, okay, well, I better do some exercise. So she started to go. So she was out for a run, and I was just running down the street. She was running down the street, and mm. this his just came running the opposite direction. Oh. So wow. at some point, somebody like programmed it in that this, this sim, I mean, he was like a bit um, fuzzed out, so you couldn't see anything. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. too detailed but yeah it was just like it was just that's interesting. okay that's weird yeah, yeah. no so there's definitely there's little happening. things that happen yeah little that things that happen that are just so much fun to ju that yeah. just happen that are just completely random and and mm. uh, yeah and I I just think it's it, it, a lot of it's beyond your control so my sim suddenly got really scared about um She's got scared. She got scared about dying. Oh, so she yes. kept having a fear. Of, and also she got scared of the dark. So she would and she would wake up in the middle of the night and run around. <laughs> oh, no. She was scared. And I didn't realize. I was like, she's scared of the dark. We're in the house. There's lights on and everything. And then I realized that at some point, I don't know when I accidentally deleted one of the outside walls of the house. Oh no! Oh, because no. I tend to play with my walls down. Yeah. And... Wow, I'm sure that must have been terrifying then. Yeah, <laughs> I don't blame me or Sim for getting scared with an entire wall, an entire wall yeah. missing. Imagine what that would be yeah. like. Wow. Gosh, that is good though. So that, you, that, yeah. That yeah, because yeah, you can create these stories. Yeah, either either because you are developing the story, you're deliberately, you know, creating. I want these mm. people to have a relationship, or I want them to have a baby, or whatever. <laughs> but you can also these stories can also create themselves. They sort of write mm. themselves. So you do something, and then your sim has a reaction that you wouldn't yeah. normally, you wouldn't expect, or you hadn't planned, or you hadn't hadn't expected, and 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 then suddenly you know you're you're this whole life going on in this mm. in this little world which and that's the bit that I really enjoy yeah it's sort definitely. of watching my sims live their lives and uh, mm. 
and sort of what they do and the development of AI um, and things like that this could become so much more mm, yeah entertaining well, can you imagine if, forward, if like chat you know. if chat gp like had a sim what it would be like that would be really interesting that would be yeah 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 we'll have to see i'm sure it's in the works somewhere people are probably having discussions but uh, <laughs> yeah another thing i guess sort of related to that i noticed in the new expansion i watched a stream uh, before we came on here and it was a person here a uh, streamer, YouTuber, c called uh, Call Me Kevin. He does a lot of Sims streaming, and he uh, decided to do what he called a, uh, what did he call it? Um, I've forgotten. But basically, the goal of the stream was to try and look after as many babies as possible in one <laughs> go. And you can, have, you can have what they call uh, science babies. Uh, yes. which means you can have a baby without like another sim you can be like a single parent and have them like arrive through the post uh somehow uh, there are such issues with that yeah i know i was a bit like are you sure that's okay <laughs> but uh there were, at one point there was about 15 babies in this house and they were all crying at once and the sim was oh just God. like slumped over asleep on the floor because they couldn't cope anymore uh so that was quite an interesting stream to watch. I think there's definitely potential within The Sims to create a very chaotic life for yes. your poor Sim if you so choose to. And bonkers scenarios. Like yeah. I, I was watching um, one before from somebody um, called Kelsey. Let me see if I can find the name. She's uh, Kelsey in in Pichichi. I don't know. Anyway, mm -hmm. she's got a tick, so she's obviously important. Um, and she was um, doing a 100 baby lifespan uh, challenge. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so she was like, had one major that she'd made, and she's basically aiming to do a speed run of babies. <laughs> so wow. by the end of day one, she was already pregnant and <laughs> she'd met someone. <laughs> <and> she... <laughs> so, yeah, so that was impressive. And, um, so I think there's lots of there's lots of cool stuff that you can do. Yeah. And on I mean, talking about the sort of family, the family add-on, the the um growing together one. That on the um Twitter, the the Sims Twitter accounts, they actually sort of said, like, you know, what have you called your babies? And there was this big long list of people just posting pictures of really cute little Sim babies and then with their names and little stories yeah. about them. And it was just so fun, you know, just to think mm. that all these people have like spent this time and really invested in them and, mm. and are really connecting to them. And I think that's that's also really interesting how people can kind of get that engaged in in the these little yeah. virtual worlds. Yeah, I guess bringing it back to the kind of main topic of a lot of the episodes of the podcast, where how feminism intersects with gaming. We've mentioned before how probably a majority of people that play The Sims are young women, and how The Sims is essentially a, sim a simulation of like a life being lived how much of that do you think is kind of the caregiving role but in the virtual world that you're like caring for your sims and looking after them making sure they're okay is that more of a, f a feminine uh feminine quality or am i playing into stereotype there mm -hmm. playing the devil's ad advocate here but yeah, yeah. you are. <laughs> um i think that in our in our world today in our current culture especially in the west you know the idea that women are the caregivers is mm. very very uh so the i these kind of games would be more um attractive to female players mm. than male players doesn't surprise me um and obviously there is an element of um concern that it just simply reinforces this yes. idea that the these things but you know i'm i've been playing sims since that it came out and i'm 
very hard hardened feminist so yeah. it doesn't necessarily lead that you know that it's that it's reinforcing these stereotypes but i think yes people i think women are but i don't think that the same is all about care i think this new no. release is yeah. about the family stuff but actually m my sims have i think only once had a baby i've never they've never had children because they've always been too busy you know with their careers or mm. decorating their houses yeah. to do any of that so you know or just socializing and then you know having a, a kid in that scenario has always felt like well much like it is in life you know it's a it's it, it it's a drain on your time you know it's a it's a, mm. another way to spend your time so you know and it's something that you need to think, <laughs> think consider before you go into it and so yeah i think it is it does appeal to um female players more and mm -hmm. i think it probably is out of gender stereotypes um and it possibly reinforces them but i think it also gives opportunity to explore other ways of living and other ways of being and escape from reality i think as well so good yeah. answer yes <laughs> no that wasn't a test or anything no i was just uh you know the question that there uh, that had to be asked to so, say yeah. yeah no i think it's yeah. i think i think it's probably more damaging from the the capitalist perspective mm. actually yes. than, yeah. the, than the gender perspective yeah. and i think sometimes the there is a danger when you become like sort of obsessed with a game how much you think about it outside of playing it as well it's very much one of those types of games where you'd be like oh I need to think about getting my sim onto this career path and then you'd be mm. thinking about how to do that while you're like cooking your own dinner or something um not that that's a bad thing but it is one of those games where you do i think think about it a lot outside of outside of playing it um but yeah it's interesting to think about definitely um one memory that cropped up for me while we were talking actually it's going back to the old sims a little bit but i do remember one of the expansion packs uh i think was just one about shop being able to go shopping and go out to like malls as they may yeah. call them um so we'd actually spend a lot of our time me and my sister just going out to these shopping malls and buying clothes and things and you're like well this probably does reflect capitalist society quite a lot actually yeah uh, when you think about it um yeah. And like changing rooms you could go try stuff on and then they had like little restaurants there as well and things all sorts of stuff but you could easily end up spending all spending all of your sims money there and then <laughs> neglecting the house and coming back to find like a broken toilet or something like that uh, <laughs> just yeah. like the real world <laughs> just like the real world indeed yes yes so in terms I mean, of oh sorry no you go no, no, you go. No, yeah, no, you go. <laughs> I was, I was just going to say, you know, like, where do we, where do we take it? Yeah, you know, where do oh, that was actually I what I was going to ask. You were going to say, <laughs> yeah, uh, minds were in sync clearly, um, but yeah, it's interesting because they've got. I think in The Sims Four, you've got lots of different worlds you can explore. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's a, well, they say that, but they're not very different. They're just no. different neighbourhoods with just slightly different, different places. Yeah, yeah, different sort of okay. moods and times. Yeah, because I guess then the other things to think about are like perhaps even different species or like different planets or whatever else. I'm taking it down the sci fi route. But, uh, you know, if we hope to survive in the distant future i expect we probably are going to have to move planets at some point before global warming mm. destroys the earth um so perhaps that's the direction for the sims to think about i don't mm. know if is is global warming even a thing in the sims do you think that would, yeah they would brought out in? yeah one of the uh, one of the uh, expansions that i got when i looked at it a few oh. years ago um is a yeah. eco eco expansion so oh, i got that one that's and cool. um 
Yeah, and so they have things like um, neighbourhood plans, which you can vote on, which are usually a bit weird, mm. like, you know, we're going to have first day on their electricity off for a couple of hours or, <laughs> um, mm. you know, and, okay. the, and things like that, your plans. And, and then they have um, things like, like you can get my sim uses too much energy and um oh. and they but they bring in other things like i've i've I, I don't know how much of it has come um expansion and how much hasn't because i've only kind of played it with that so i'm so i'm a bit confused yeah. where the blur, where the lines are but i mean i've got like a beehive in my garden and i can make honey oh, and nice. candle wax yeah. and then i can make candles out of out of the wax and i can mm. make cakes from the honey and 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 then there's and then you can go and rummage in bins wow. to um to to get um I, uh, bits and pieces which you can use for your really... for making stuff and you can That's also cool. you also buy a machine and you can recycle other mm. sims come round and say oh can i do some recycling in your machine please yeah and they, they just yeah. use my machine so yeah oh, there is definitely a, a thing like that and and my sim um i decided this time to have a challenge to have like a sort of goal mm. and her goal is to go to space and bring back five aliens and i yeah. i don't even know how to get into space and i've wow. been playing it for ages i'm just yeah. doing it so badly but um but yeah so i think that might be why she keeps getting scared that she's not going to achieve her, mm. life, her life goals she isn't but um so yeah, so that and 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 I yeah. do think you know that's really useful, and I I also think that yeah I would like to see maybe other species coming in. Mm. Yeah, we have like a, a pets expansion, so you can get like animals, yeah. but yeah. like as we like vampires and werewolves, um, that's right, and things like that. Um, but yeah, and I I. I actually eat Sims, you know, that's really what mm. I what I have wanted for many years. And I'm quite surprised that we don't have it yet. It just feels like a really yeah, obvious it's like a natural sort of transition place. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. That is definitely something that could happen in future. Because then you could have all sorts of possibilities, couldn't you really? For for anything really. But yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something. But then maybe it just um, turns into second life then. Um, that's true. Which, yeah. weirdly, I've never set foot in. I, I I feel like it's right up my street, but I never mm. ever play. Ever, I've never played it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting if you could maybe just have ways of just invite friends to your you know, yeah. actual real a bit like um, sim house. Yeah, a bit like no, I've forgotten the name of it, you see. Animal um, Crossing. Animal Crossing, yes, that's it, yes. Because everyone was really into that during mm. uh, the pandemic times, weren't they? And showing everyone like their little islands and all sorts of stuff. So mm. yeah, I think there's definitely a social aspect that's missing in that yeah. way from the sims yeah that could really take off definitely especially like you say well we've talked about how popular it is with streamers and things as well mm. that could really do a lot of different things couldn't it yeah, yeah absolutely i wonder how many people are crying out for a vegan expansion as well yeah <laughs> turn your yeah. sims vegan that would be quite a cool one yeah <laughs> yeah um, well you can i mean my sim gets really upset because she's she's a slave to the man ah. every time she comes home and she's like yeah and if she if she spends too much money on if, you know like now i'm growing vegetables so it's okay but if she spends too much money um on food she gets upset about that mm -hmm. like being wasteful of that so yeah wow yeah so it's taking steps definitely yeah that's cool right well i think We've pretty much exhausted the topic of The Sims for today, at least. I'm sure if there's a, 
amazing expansion in future we'll probably come back to talk about it <laughs> but I've really enjoyed having a chat about like and learning about what what changes have happened in the sims because there's certainly a lot I didn't know about um that I now know so I'm tempted mm -hmm. even more to play it after yeah. my long drought of, of no sims content um so yeah thank you for joining me Gem. i've had a really fun discussion hey, and i yeah. hope everyone listening or watching has enjoyed as well if you want to share some of your ideas for what you'd like out of the sims in future please do let us know in the comments mm -hmm. uh, you can also like or subscribe or rate us on spotify leave us any comments there as well and if you really want to support us uh, you can sign up to our patreon again wrong corner uh, is in the corner there there's a lovely qr code that you can scan uh, to support us so thank you very much for your time and we'll be back in the future we have episodes every thursday um at 7 p.m and we'll see you again soon bye everyone bye <laughs>